for you already. In the name of Jesus Christ, may the grace that lifts, may the grace that announces, let it rest upon you now. Let it rest upon you now. Let it rest upon you now. You are welcome to Believers Global TV. Beloved in Christ, I implore you not to miss this important message you are about to listen to. It is not by accident that you are here on this channel right now. I strongly believe that there is something God is about to do in your life through this teaching. And that is why I encourage you to listen to the end. Colossians chapter 3 verse 16 says, Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing with grace in your heart to the Lord. Today is a day of divine favor and testimony. Stay to the end. Don't go away. God bless you. Someone's life is changing. In the name of Jesus Christ. For instance, please look up. The Bible says, let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Don't just say, oh, I know that I'm the redeemed. Have you said it? It is a principle that whatever you are, say it. It's not just about the redeemed alone. Anything you believe that God has said you are, he says among the many principles that makes it manifest in your life, you must say, let the anointed of the Lord say so. Let the blessed of the Lord say so. Are we together now? Many people know so, but they don't say so. The power is released at the point of speaking. And God said, and there was. Not and God wanted, not and God taught. The Bible says where the word of a king is, there is power. There are many believers who keep speaking evil, speaking a lot of wrong things about their lives. And can I tell you this? Please look up. Most of you sadly believe that the more matured you are in the kingdom, the more you throw away these things, you call them elementary, so to say. Why do I need to speak the word of God? The times that we live in will surprise you if you ignore the simplicity of the principles of the kingdom. Hallelujah. Everything God has made you, say it, not once, perpetually. Philemon 1 and verse 6, that the communication of your faith might be effectual through the acknowledging of every good thing that is in you in Christ. And the greatest way to acknowledge is by verbalizing it. Lord, you have favored me. I decree and declare that I remain favored. I am blessed in the city. I am blessed in the country. A thousand falls by my side, ten thousand by my right side. None will hurt me. With my eyes will I see and behold. Can I tell you, God does not do what you want. God only does what he says. Genesis 21 verse 1. And the Lord visited Sarah. 21, 1, Genesis. Visited Sarah as he had said. And the Lord did unto Sarah as he had spoken. If God has not said it, if he has not spoken it, the basis for performance is not there. Is someone learning? You must learn how to live by the principles of the word of God. I've taught you several principles through the years and connecting with our Sunday services and all that you receive even during Friday services here. They are, we continue to teach principles that help you. Let me give you an instance. Please look up. Let's assume you are in a financial situation right now or you are in any situation of loss. Anytime you are experiencing losses in your life, it's not business or investment or job that brings you out. Go and read your Bible. From Genesis to, Re to Revelation, it is the responsibility of the prophetic. That is God's authorized bailout system out of anything that is lost. Alas, master, for it was borrowed. And he said, where fell it? And the axe head floated. Now, when you live by the principles of the kingdom, you live by this. He spake a parable that men ought always to pray. Luke 18 and verse 1. And not to faint. If you are not prayerful, you are already violating the principles of the kingdom. Prayer is not for prayer warriors. Prayer is not for preachers. Prayer is for men. So the moment you realize that you are a man, the Bible mandates that you pray. Being prayerful 
is is not is not um how do i put it now it's a prerequisite for an excelling life whether you are an intercessor or not kingdom principles anything you want to build in your life you require wisdom he said through wisdom is a house built by understanding it is established and through knowledge the rooms are filled with every pleasurable thing most of us have not found the place of wisdom we have not seen the excellency of wisdom in fact the bible puts it this way it says christ is the power of god and christ is the wisdom of god when the anointing manifests it manifests as the power of god and the wisdom of god there are issues in your life that is not power you need you need wisdom there are issues in your life that you need power it is still the ministry of the anointing that when the anointing is released it is manifested as the power of god and also the wisdom of god don't give the assignment of wisdom to power are we learning now kingdom principles apostle i don't have any friend i think it's just because i love god no the bible says he that wants friends must show himself friendly if you violate that principle you may be the most anointed person in your life you will never have anyone willing to invest their lives into yours let me tell you this please look up the time has come for us to ask yourself the values that i practice and the principles that i live by where do they come from let god be true and every man a liar when i came into zaria i was just looking around and you know i've, I've received so many text messages from people apostle times are hard finances things are down as we are right now we don't even know and let me tell you i sympathize with this but can i tell you my dear people we are not the first to be at times like this there was a time in the bible they said money failed money failed that people came and said buy us by the immutability of god's counsel if it is true that you engage the principles that that make for god's financial resources to come to you you will marvel and wonder let me give you a few of the principles number one there is he that scattereth and yet increases, the Bible says. There is he that withholdeth more than his meat and tends to poverty. But that is not the only principle. Principle number two, the gift of a man will make room for him and bring him before. So if you scatter alone and you are not valuable, you will still suffer because the equation is not complete. A lazy man will not plow by reason of the weather and he will beg in harvest. It is still part of the principle. Don't pick part of it. Pick the whole counsel. The challenge with believers is that we pick the most convenient part of kingdom principles that suit us and we find out it does not work. You must embrace the whole counsel that releases that dimension of God you desire. Convenient or not. That is where the grace of God comes in. So that where your strength would ordinarily not be able to help you through, you can now obtain that enabling grace. Is someone learning now? If the only thing you do is tithing and giving, dear people, hear me, resources will come, but you will not perpetuate wealth that way. There is a place of value. There is a place of relationships. There is the wisdom of increase. There is the law of management. These are all principles together that make for increase which one have you neglected how about longevity do you know that there are kingdom principles that are allotted for longevity the first law of longevity is honor to parents in the lord it says honor your father and your mother that your days may be long comma and it may be well with you it is a terrible thing for your days to be long and it's not well with you because you will pray for death longevity is useless if it comes with a plethora of pain so our society that has been trained to dishonor people spiritually and physically dishonor elderly people they are not intelligent they didn't go to school you are you are authorizing the realm of the spirit to cut short your life what is the second principle for longevity i said before you life and death 
I said before you, blessing and cursing, choose life. The first way to choose life is to verbalize it. Then in addition to it, you walk in keeping with the principles that are pro-life. For instance, taking care of your body. When you take care of your body, it is your commitment to tell God and the realm of the spirit that you intend to live long. You are careless with your body, eat anything, drink anything. You are signing up for death. Is someone hearing? Yes. Another principle of longevity, guard your heart with all diligence. For out of it comes the issue of life. Job said, the things that I feared most has come upon me. You must protect your mind. Is God teaching us now? Yes. We must be honest and strong and matured to live by the principles of the kingdom. I submit to you that many believers are not living by the principles of the kingdom. Apostle, I want to excel. Okay? Show me the principle you know about excelling in life. Because the Bible relates excellence to something called an excellent spirit have you embraced it the name of the lord is not only great it is excellent oh lord our god how excellent is your name to excel means to surpass ordinary standards and excellence has principles one of the principles of excellence is to be thorough attention to details if you are not a thorough person in your life, you have neglected the law of excellence. There will be a side effect. Are we together now? Apostle, I want to see favor in my life. Show me what you know about favor. I know God favors people. You are right. But that will not bring you favor. God grants favor. I have asked him. He will give me. Yes, prayer is only one of the five keys that control favor. The first law of favor is honor. The second law of favor is productivity. The third law of favor is relationships. You see that? The fourth law of favor is impartation. You can't do one over six and expect favor to be lavishly at work in you. The real secret for favor is understanding. Proverbs 13, 15. It says, good understanding procured favor, but the way of the transgressor is hard. So, there are many things we just shout around that does not speak in our lives. Because we are not working in keeping. Are you understanding point two now? That you want to thrive in these days. Your life. You must bring together all of the keys of the kingdom that you know. And engage them with understanding. How about divine health? Is there such a reality as divine health? Absolutely. But what are the keys? What are the keys? Number one, the first law of divine health. Look up please. The first law of divine health is your words. Your words. Your words. Very important. Your words. Let the weak say, I am strong. Your words. Because when it has to do with living, you live through food and words. You are eating well, you are not speaking well, you will still die. Words. I shall not die. Believe and declare the works of the Lord. Amen. That's my confession even at this time. That I shall not die. But leave and declare the works of the Lord. Thank you for staying to the end of this message. But before you leave, I want to tell you a story. There was a father who has two sons. And so he sent two of his sons to the farm. Like to go and harvest yam. So... He called them both and sent them. The elderly one says he is going to go, that he is going to like go on the errands. But the 
the younger one says he's not going to go. And so they left the presence of the man. And behold, the one that says he will go to the farm does not actually went. But the one who says he was not going to go, at a point he thought within himself and said, my father has been very responsible for me, so I will go. So he changed his mind and went. So I want to ask, among these two sons, who actually does the will of the father? It is the younger one. So as you have listened to this message, it's not about listening alone. If you're listening, and probably you feel stirred up. But later on, the zeal, the passion that you had, when you were listening to this message dies and you do not apply this message, it means the time that you dedicated listening to, them, to this message was a waste. So it is not about what you hear alone. It's not about the messages that you listen to alone. It is more of what you take out of the, those messages and then apply to your daily lives to make you um, better. So, I do hope and I pray that this message will transform your life, will turn your life around.